9 a.m. Welcome along to the third annual OTB All Stars. Huge achievement for everybody to be nominated in these categories. They're, uh, it's called the Off the Ball Stars. Off the, the Ball Stars. Fun on. <laughs> off the Ball Stars. Huge achievement for everybody to be nominated. We've gone no expense. No expense. It's the third annual OTB Stars. Every so expense spared. Every expense spared. Uh, these awards tend to be the high point in the careers of those who've been nominated, indeed, those who are going to win. There will be no further ado on what have we got. Hard to believe it's that time of the year already, isn't it? And uh, it's great to have you with us this evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're going to get through seven categories this evening in our awards gala dinner. Our first category tonight is Hurling Game of the Year. I'm not sure who actually picks up these awards. Hurling Game of the Year, nominee one is Kilkenny 222, Galway 320. That is in uh, the Leinster Round Robin Hurling Championship. Uh, Wexford 21, Kilkenny 118. That draw, remember, on the last day of uh, the Round Robin Great Leinster Championship, wasn't it? Dublin 319, Galway 24, Dublin dumping Galway out. Also on the same night, a fantastic night for hurling. The Leinster final also gets a nomination. Wexford 123, Kilkenny 23 points. And then the final two nominees is that incredible weekend of hurling we had in Crow Park. Limerick 217, Kilkenny 121 in the first semi final. And then Wexford 320, Tipperary 128. There are your nominees for Hurling Game of the Year, and I hand you over to my glamorous assistant to reveal the winner. No expense. I really need a knife. Have we got a knife? Can we get like an envelope knife? We have like a 12 carat knife outside, just hanging around. And we've killed the music for dramatic effect, I'm assuming, not that the track has run out. The winner is, there really could only be one, Hurling Game of the Year is the Wexford Tipperary All-Ireland semi-final. I really could only one winner there, fair. I, I, didn't, I wasn't aware of who was going to be the winner there until, obviously, because the thing is so transparent. Um, but there really had to be only one winner there. It was, um, it was a heart-stopping game. It came down, I presume the other Sammy was, the, was number two on the list. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we've had enough. Enough of that guff. All right, please. Uh, I it just... OK, so I picked that winner, obviously. Yeah. But I, I, I really can't see another game throughout the year that had just the amount of heart-wrenching events that happened in the game. It was, it's, it's actually hard to comprehend just how many different events took place, how many different times your view changed on who was yeah. going to get over the line, especially with the sending off. And then the whole aftermath of that, the emotion that Liam Sheedy showed, the devastation of Davy Fitzgerald. And then I think it's actually added to by the fact that Tip went on to win the All Ireland because to crush like the fact that the, that, that game wasn't even in the in the the final wasn't even in the mix here I'm exactly sure. <laughs> uh, granted that the, the red card kind of destroyed that as a contest and it was a poor day but bec like just on top of that that kind of makes this an even more important game that I think Wexford they beat them in the Leinster final they would have been confident to go on to win the All Ireland final after such a, a, an entertaining game the de facto All Ireland final I dare say yeah. uh, without being disrespectful to Kilkenny people what a game one of the one of the best and the All Ireland hurling semi final weekend has turned into quality wise the best weekend in the Irish sporting calendar we move on to our second category today our second category is rejection of the year. First nominee is the United States of America rejecting Dermot Connolly. Next up is Ashburn Credit Union rejecting County Meath. Greg Kennedy rejecting TJ Reid. And our final nominee is Tickets.ie rejecting Dublin and Mayo fans during that scramble for All Ireland semi final tickets. Tough competition. Rejection of the year. I have no great leaning either way on this one. Transparent. But it really can only be one winner here, I'm sure. It'll... And the winner is. Congratulations, Donald Trump, the United States rejection of Dermot Connolly. Congratulations to everybody involved there. It was a, one of the most significant rejections we've seen. It's uh, up there with LeBron in the 2016 NBA Finals when he, he rejected that Golden State player. It's fair enough to say there should be only one winner. I was in a pub in Bray last weekend that had also had a Dublin signed Dublin jersey up on the wall and everybody just went about their business like as if this was something that was really normal. Did you take a picture and post it on Twitter? No. Outraged? No. Your full outrage game? I definitely wasn't outraged. I think it's a bit weird but I find it hard to be outraged by the idea. Like if the Kilkenny team that you were discussing yesterday morning that went into went on all those runs, if I get that jersey would appeared in that pub in Bray, I probably would have been like, oh yeah, why not? Wouldn't have bad in an island. Just great teams get appreciated That's, wherever they go. Yeah. 
Game yeah. recognises game in Bray. If it was a Kerry pub, now it'd be different. But it's Wicklow pub, so. It's, oh, Kerry wouldn't be. Or if it was a, if it was a Mayo pub. It'd raised to the ground that pub. Yeah, absolutely it would. Uh, nominees number three for category number three are as follows. Category number three is football game of the year. First nominee is down 313, Armagh 217, one of the games of a cracking Ulster Championship. Armagh up again for their entertaining clash with Mayo, 213 to 115, Mayo getting over the line in that one. Meath Clare in the last round of the qualifiers is our next nominee. The Munster final between Cork and Kerry. And Kerry and Donegal, the 120 apiece game that felt more like a hurling game in the Super 8s in Croke Park. And then final nominee for football game of the year is the drawn All Ireland final. Dublin 116, Kerry 116. I was away for the replay, so I didn't bother nominating it. <laughs> I don't know what happened. This category is an absolute farce. This shouldn't even be a category. There should really only be one game nominated here because the rest have just been invited so we can squeeze a couple hundred quid out of them to make a few bob out of it. <laughs> the winner is, of course, the football game of the year, Dublin 116, Kerry 116 in the first to drawn game. The rest of the game is a fast recovery. Kerry Donegal, I thought, was, was up there as well. It, it, but Kerry Donegal was missing something because you could sense that this was not knockout. Well, 116 to 116 was, was never supposed to be 116 to 116. No, and it, again, it was kind of like that, that hurling semi final weekend. You just couldn't believe you managed to cram all these things into the space of a finite window. And that's what happened. And, you know, there's a lot of pain that goes with that. So I think we're going to move swiftly on. That's okay swiftly along on. Uh, category number four is International Moment of the Year. Our first nominee is James Carr's goal, leaving soccer fans dumbfounded on Twitter. Next nominee is Josh Prey's general bemusement with the GAA. Next up is Don Lowe Cusack, blaming the Brits for basically everything. And next up is Reen O'Neill becoming John Cena for the best international moments from the GAA calendar this summer. Who's it going to be, Adrian? And the winner is... Somebody get me a knife. These envelopes are really hard to open. Oh, and seal them because the process had to be so watertight with glue. The winner is International Moment of the Year. Congratulations, Mayo's James Carr, leaving soccer fans dumbfounded. And it's been a great couple of months for Nathan Murphy, who was, of course, crowned IMRO Sports Broadcaster of the Year. He, of course, played a big helping hand here in uh, James Carr, getting to 8 million views. You had people from Buenos Aires to Zimbabwe saying, what is this game? Handball, ref, and all those hilarious gags. And, uh, you know... James Carr brought Gaelic football to a whole new audience. Can I be a curmudgeon? Yes. What the hell were the guys, particularly the, the substitute at number 17, not sure who he was. What was he doing? Like, there was an element of that goal that if somebody, a defender that actually knew what they were doing, would have cleaned them out of it, never should have happened. Like, I would equate James Carr's goal, that goal from AO, brilliant goal, brilliant finish, fair play to him. Like, you, you know, you play what's in front of you. And in this case what's running out of your way. I would equate that goal with Maradona's, maybe his two goals uh, at the 86 World Cup against England, certainly the second one, where you're, you re-watch that and you're looking at the England players going, what are you doing? Like, put in a challenge. One lad, like, just trolling along up alongside him, front row view. What's, oh, look at this. Maradona's making a beeline for the goal. What's the point of putting in a challenge? Well, it's easy to say that when you're not playing in the World Cup in 1986, so you're, you're not there as a Galway player. I mean... I wasn't playing at the 86 World Cup on. That is true. And no, I was not that Galway number 17. But Jesus Christ, put in a challenge. It was Damon Brannigan. Was it? The number 17, yeah. Right, put in a challenge. It's, uh, it's a forward tackle, as Tommy says. I agree with him. God, I, you're outing Tommy there. I'm, I'm not liking the criticism here for Damon Brannigan. This is a well, celebration. Well, he's criticism to be had. He's thrown by James, James Carr. Carr. Right? Like, sort of almost patted him on the back of the way through. James Carr is the Christopher Columbus of uh, GAA, bringing us to a whole new world, and hopefully more of our friends in, uh, in the new world to come back with. I don't know what you're talking about. Let's move on to here. the new category. He's just, he's brought us to a whole new audience. 8.5 million people, congratulations. Next up, we've got Hurler of the Year. Three nominees for Hurler of the Year. Same with the ripoff. PWC, GAA, GPA, All Stars are Patrick Horgan of Cork. Seamus Callanan of Tipperary and Kilkenny's TJ Reid. Of course, this means far more than who actually wins the rip-off award tonight, so the big one, Adrian. And the winner is... We should have had a drum roll for this, shouldn't we? 
Drum rolls will. We like didn't cover the envelopes taking so long to open. Drum rolls very PWCG AGPA. Right, okay, a bit cliched. The winner is Hurler of the Year, Shamie Callanan. Congrats, Shamie. Well done. Just look at his face. Look what? at his face. In, like, I, I know it's kind of hard in the immediate aftermath of moments like this to put things into context. Mm. But if you can, can you rank this moment for Seamus Callan's career? Oh, it must be, the, I would think, the all-time highlight. Like, above the 1-2 in the All-Ireland... Was it 1-2 in the All-Ireland final? Um, I would, by the way, would have given it solely... And I know you're going to say this should exist in another category, but screw it, I'm going... There's not another category that exists that this should be in. But the goal from the knees, uh, Horgan's goal from the knees, that should have warranted whatever prize was on offer, just That's, give it to him. We could have just done score of the year and put that up Mo against Or moment Carr. of the year. Moment of the year. Moment of the year would have been such an easy one. It was better than score of the year. It was different. It was a level above that. Yeah. And well, also, I guess also in a non-Emma Brannigan way, whoever was, the Kenny lad who was on him was like almost decapitated him just before he took the, got the shot away. He, Emma Brannigan didn't have a stick in his hand. Well, he was just running past him. Next up, our penultimate award for the third annual Off the Ball Stars is Unlikely Rivalry of the Year. And the nominees are Joe Brolly versus Radio Telefiche Aaron, Dublin versus The Spread in the Leinster Championship, Brian Hogan versus Hawkeye, Mead manager Andy McEntee versus unnamed local journalist, and finally, The Kerry Mafia versus David Goff. And the winner is, I'll free open the envelope here because it takes too long, is, this shouldn't have even been in the category because it was a surprise to, unlikely to nobody, Joe Brawley versus Radio Telefish Aaron. Congratulations to both of you, both playing a big part. In this. That shouldn't have been in that category because it was the most likely, Joe Brawley versus anybody is the most likely rivalry of any year. It's a very good point actually, to be quite honest with you. Need to, need to review it for next year. Our final award tonight, ladies and gentlemen, is Footballer of the Year. The nominees are... Stephen Cluxton, Dublin. Jack McCaffrey, Dublin. Conor Callaghan, Dublin. I really found you found your stride there with the nominations announcing right at the last category. I feel like uh, Marty Whelan here on what's it called? Winning streak. Footballer of the year. He is on a winning streak. It's Jack McCaffrey. Congratulations, Jack McCaffrey. Back to back winner of Off the Ball Star for Footballer of the Year. All right. What was your rationale? I mean, what, what made you discount the other two? Is that maybe a fair way of asking it? Brilliant all season. Rebounded from the Paddy Durkin shellacking he took to put in one of the best All-Ireland football performances we've ever seen. Simple as that. Then again, so did Cluxton. You didn't get carried away with your... There was no emotional vote for Cluxton? No, you can't... You, Don't let emotion... Are you suggesting that emotion gets into the off-the-ball stars? This is a cold, calculated, factual award ceremony, and I wouldn't dare let this be tarnished. We'll be back next year for the fourth annual Off the Ball Stars, I trust. Like any great Off the Ball Stars, OTB Stars awards, like any great award ceremony, there is no outro. We're going to clunkily head out of here. Thanks to all for all this amazing hard work on that. Hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any categories of your own, keep them coming into us.